Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be telling you about the 10 mistakes I made while building my six foot picket fence and then how I fixed or mitigated those mistakes. So the first mistake I made, and it might not look like it from this angle, is that I put up the wood when it was super green and I didn't dry it out at all. As some of you may know, the current quality of wood given the current supply shortages is not the greatest, neither the dimensions nor how green it is, is anywhere up to what the standards used to be. So when I got the wood for this fence, it was super dripping wet and I didn't dry it out and that led to this. Now this is actually the first part of the fence that I built. So I made more of my mistakes on this end and the other end that you saw first is actually where I ended and I had improved at that point. But putting up that super green wood just made sure that it was all, a lot of it was gonna warp and cup and do all sorts of things when it dried, which made all these problems that I have to fix. This is actually very mitigated compared to what it is. I've, it was, I've already replaced a bunch of the pickets, but these pickets were literally just cupping and warping off of the fence. So dry your wood out if at all possible in today's world. These were AC2 pressure treated green pickets and they just are a lot greener and a lot wetter than they should be according to a standard from even a few years ago. Those standards are no longer being met. The next mistake I made in building this fence is that I actually started putting it up in 100 degree weather. And that just, all of these ones that warped or cupped, it just really accelerated that. And I literally had pickets stacked up against the fence as I was going to nail them in. And they were turning into total chips, like they looked like bows and were just falling over in the stack because they were warping so hard because with them being green and it being 100 degrees and sunny out they were drying way too fast on one side and it just warped the heck out of them so i would say especially if you got particularly green wood you need to put it up where the weather's not going to dry it out exceptionally fast because that is going to cause issues for you and you're gonna end up having to replace more of the pickets than you would have had to otherwise. All right, so the third mistake I made is I initially put up these posts here and I had them up for too long before I put up the cross bracings that go between them. And since the posts were also green, a bunch of them ended up warping and you can see ones like this, that it was perfectly in line with the garage, but now it's actually kind of pushed out and warped outwards. And so if I would have put up those cross bracings sooner, it would have helped mitigate some of the, the moving and the warpage of the actual posts. I mean, obviously with green wood, you're gonna, you're gonna have some of that, but if you have the cross bracings up, it's gonna help keep it in place a little bit more uh, while it dries out and you're gonna have a little bit less warping. In my case, I was just doing what I could when I could, and that may be your case as well, but if you can get them up quicker, uh, just do that because it's going to save you some issues. So the next mistake I made is I wasn't sure what type of fasteners to use, what type of nails or screws or what have you. So I ended up using 16 gauge nails because I had a 16 gauge air nail gun. And it's just, especially when you're using green wood, it's just not enough. Even if you use a bunch of nails, the warping and the cupping is going to pull it away from those braces and you're going to have to go back and redo it either with a heavier gauge nail or with trim screws. Um, so 
I figured out that these, these framing nails here, or actually it would probably be better to have a, a galvanized nail of six penny, two inches, it works well. And one of the reasons I use 16 gauges, I, I didn't want there to be evident holes on the outside. I was trying to make it look just like a solid picket and not a bunch of nail holes on the outside. But if you put it up green, the wood actually ends up swelling around that and you don't see it anyways. So it's not something to worry about. Uh, another type of screw I'll put up here is a trim screw and I've actually fixed some of the boards that were moderately warped or cupped, I've been able to pull those boards in with, with a couple of these trim screws and the, the green wood will also swell around those so you don't even see them after the fact. So the point is use at least a six penny nail and or use good decking trim screws and it's it's you're not going to have to go back and redo it another mistake i made and this may be just a matter of personal taste is that i tried to follow the slope the exact slope and topography of this ground and it gradually slopes down from the house to the road as you can see there so what i did i put a board like this on the ground and then i just set the pickets on top of it and nailed them in for spacing and then once i got enough pickets on there i moved the board a little put more pickets on and that allowed me to gradually follow the slope of the the ground downwards but what i discovered is i didn't particularly like the look of exactly following the topography and i'll show you what i did on the ones more towards the end and how that ended up looking better. After I had the, the posts up there, I figured out kind of where the slope was kind of standard. So right there to right over here was an area that I could do a nice straight single line. And I tied some string from on the bottom all the way over to there and got it nice and tight so i could see if if that straight line would work and here it did so then i used that bottom line to put a picket right there and then a picket right there and then on the top i ran a line actually it was it was actually to the left of the gate right there so and then on the top i ran a line from that picket over to that picket and then use the top line to set up the heights of the picket. So then they are a nice uniform line rather than going up and down or, you know, kind of more gradually following the topography. I think visually it's a more pleasing thing to just follow a straight line. And then right there, obviously I ran another line down and followed that line but that's more pleasing than just kind of jaggedly going up and down and if you have bumpy ground you may end up with gaps underneath but you can put this little rabbit fence down here like i did and you don't even really notice it so i just i personally think this looks a lot better and i'll show you over on the side here kind of illustrate it for you a little more. So on the side, I have actually two slopes. It ran from at the corner to over here because the, the ground seemed to make a nice line right there. And using the string, I was able to line that up on the bottom and then it had a second slope where it goes down over to there. So I used those two different slopes and I did a line right there. And then I did a line gradually going down right there but all keeping in line with that, that top string that I placed between a picket on the end and a picket at the end of that string and lining them all up according to that top string and then doing the same thing again right there. Another mistake that I made was not using a template board or a legend board. There's a word for it, I can't think of it right now. Uh, maybe, maybe you can help me out with that in the comments. But it's basically where you take one of your cross members here, and in this case, a two by three, 
And you can see I marked on here a mark with an arrow and a mark with an arrow. That arrow indicates where the, the, the board's gonna be. And then another mark. And basically you stand that up next to your post here and it allows you to quickly nail in those, those cross supports without having to measure and mark each one. You stand the board up next to it, you put up the cross members where that board says that you should do it, and then you just nail or screw them in, and it goes a lot quicker than, than having to go and mark and, and figuring out the measurements for each board. That just made it so much quicker once I did that, because over on this end, I was, I was measuring and it was just going slow. Another mistake I made was using two by three cross members instead of two by fours like that one. So basically I was trying to save money and it did save me a decent amount of money and you got to do what you got to do. So if you can only afford the two by threes, do the two by threes. But the two by three, two by fours make for a much more rigid fence. And the, the two by threes are just, it's just, it's, I mean, it works and it's fine. It's just a little bit more wobbly than the two by fours. They provide an extra bit of rigidity. So one way to fix that I would suggest is if you're gonna go with the two by threes, instead of doing the full eight foot spacing is maybe bring it down to seven foot spacing to give it a little extra rigidity there. Another thing, that I did that would have saved me a lot of time if I didn't is I worried too much about being perfectly perpendicular or level or things like that, both with putting the posts in and then with putting the pickets up. The posts are a little bit more important. You want to get as, as close as you can, but you don't really have to be OCD about it because as you can see, this post here twisted and different ones warped and they twist and warped a, a little bit. So no matter how good you get it, because they're green, once they dry out, it's just not, it's not gonna be there. I would say spend a little more time on the post, the pickets, just check level every, you know, go quite a bit before you check level again, because I spent so much time making these level and perfect next to each other. And then when they dried, they shrank up. So they put bigger gaps in there. And then you can see there's warpage. So the gaps are bigger towards the middle and smaller towards the top. And all of that effort and time spent making these perfectly level just wasn't worth it. It's just basically at the end of the day, it's got to pass the eye test and I'm going to be replacing that one and some other ones anyways. And that brings us to the next mistake I made, which was not having 15 to 20 spare pickets, because when you buy green pickets, a lot of them are going to warp and some, a lot of that will be, you'll be able to fix it with the proper fasteners or the proper drying. But some of them, no matter what you do on the fence, they're just going to warp crazily and you're just going to have to pull them down and put up one of your extras to replace it. I would make sure those extras are dried before you do that. That way you don't end up with the same issue again. But every once in a while you can see some of them just go a little bit crazy and warp more than the rest of them. And so you're going to want to pull those down and replace them just to make sure that the fence looks okay. I've already replaced about 10 and I probably have a 10 more or so that I need to need to do, but it's just going to happen when you put up green wood. So get yourself, you know, if you have the size of fence like mine, which is a pretty decent sized fence, get yourself 15 to 20 extra pickets, let them dry ahead of time. And then when you have those ones that warp, you can pull them down and just put up put up a matching picket. And the final mistake I made was not thinking about my gate design much at a time. I have, as you can see, three gates. So that big vehicle gate, that one over there, and then this one right here. And I basically got enough material and 
and put up the post so that I could have gates, but I didn't think about how the, the locking mechanisms would be integrated. And it made for some awkward, ending up with some awkward design here. So this, if you're not careful, when, when you shut it, you really slam your fingers in this because of how I designed this. I didn't, I didn't think about that ahead of time. Uh, I should have designed this differently. Honestly, if I was gonna do it again, I probably would have moved that to the outside. I thought against the house, it would be a little more secure because it's mounted to a post. But honestly, I probably should have moved that over to this side. And then when you're doing stuff, you're not running your fingers into things if it's equal and level. Or one way you can mitigate the design issues is by just deciding to go with different hardware. But again, I was trying to save money. So I went with what I had bought already. Just try to plan ahead a little bit more on that stuff. Did you open that, buddy? Oh, okay. Well, I hope you found that useful. When I was designing my fence, I had a hard time finding, you know, some of those bits of information that I learned while building the fence. And sometimes that's the key to learn about something is to just do it. So I hope you have better luck than I did with making less mistakes and that this video was helpful. If it was, please do go down below, hit a thumbs up, and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks, guys.